So you've got to learn about conditional statements. So have you seen those if statements in Excel VBA? They also give us a lot of control, allow us to do more complex things with the coding. Let's look at the specific thing we're trying to do um, in the Excel VBA Real World Task Season 3. A big welcome back to the series. But we want to loop, we've got a loop within loop in place. And this is going to be our active team Greyhound. Then we want to loop back up this data, but we only want to do something if the row matches what the active team is. In this case, Greyhound. Mm. So how to do that? That's the challenge in our video and learning conditional statements is going to really help. It's going to really help you power forward your Excel VBA. And if you're enjoying this series, that's fantastic. A big welcome back. And remember, we've got lots more content like this where I work through really involved tasks in Excel VBA, tasks that are very close to what I do in my consulting work. There's loads of them in our member communities. Please take the time to check those out. We'd love to see you in there. The link is in the video description below. So with that said, let's get back into our task. And we are talking about conditional statements here. Now, you might want to take the time to check the end of the last video. I did a big test. Everything seemed to be working, but that really highlighted the problem that we have. Hmm. So I'm going to go back uh, into our VBA here. And yeah, what I'm going to do is create another variable here because this team name, this team name is an important piece of information. We're going to use it in this conditional statement. We might use it elsewhere. It's something we want to use again and again. Let's make it portable. Let's make it portable by putting it in a variable. I'm going to say active team. Active team means we know we're looping through all the teams. So what's the current team? that we're looking at. We're looping through all of them. What's the current team that we're looking at? And this is going to be what kind of variable will it be? Discussed briefly in the previous video. It's going to be a string variable, isn't it? Because it's a text variable here. Okay. So declare a variable. In fact, I've already got this at the top. So once again, being supported by my annotations here, I'm working through this task. I'm getting a little bit fatigued now. So I'm really appreciating the support I'm getting from the pseudo code that we did at the beginning there. So active team at the top. Mm. So we've got our variable. So Excel's created a little space, a little space in its memory to store a bit of information for us. Fantastic. What do we want to do? We want to put something into that little space, just like you put your socks away into your wardrobe or your suit. I'm not sure what it might be. We can say active team equals, mm. then stop the video. What does it equal? Mm. Okay. Fairly straightforward, equals fixture cell here. Once again, just want to test that. I'm going to say message box active team. So have we successfully got the value into a variable? I think this might work just by using fixture cell, actually. Mm. So that could be a critique of this to code. It's a bit verbose. You know, there's some unnecessary structures in there. But I like the clarity that putting this into a, dis a descriptive variable name, an informative variable name, affords us. So if I hit F5 here, I'd expect we're just looping through the teams now, and I can see the name of the teams flashing up, and I can also see the, the work that Excel is doing in the background. So Dax Hunt, German Shepherd, Springer Spaniel, I'd expect to see Golden Retriever, and then we're going to exit this loop. So debugging techniques, I include them in the video because I use them all the time. One of our Excel VBA uh, meta, uh, meta skills here. So allocate a variable. Now, this is something that often happens when you do an Excel VBA. Um, your annotations, you, you, you just give up on them. That's what I've done here. OK, so I'm going to take the time now to catch up with our annotations. So I want to loop through historic match data. I'm not writing these fresh. I'm using the ones that I wrote, wrote before to prove to you that that first stage in video one, where we just talked through conceptually what we were trying to do, that was useful. So we're starting the loop through the match data here and then ending the loop through the match data. Uh, there we go. So getting the game result. Ah, we've done this as well. So allocated team name to variable. 
Okay, there we go. Yeah, possibly, this is possibly overkill, but I don't think you can do this too conscientiously. This will give you value. We're not going to worry about clearing existing data, uh, static definition, that doesn't matter. Right, I love it. We've found the specific piece of pseudocode, the specific comment that describes what we're trying to do here. If this row contains the target team, and do we have one more? And then that's it. We want to transfer the results to the fixture sheet. And then we want to get the result of the game as well. Okay. So these are the two instructions that we want to get working in this video. Okay. If this row contains the target team, that's the logic. That's the logic that we want to articulate. So that's what we want to do. Translate into VBA. Mm. Okay, how do we do that? Right, we can use some of this construct here, I'm absolutely sure. So I'm mm -hmm. going to uh, control Z, control C here. I'm going to say if, and then control V. Now remember this piece of code from the previous video is unknown. Uh, this piece of code is that aligned. Yes, this piece of code is going to give us, this piece of code refers to the active team. Well, it refers to, that's not quite right, actually. The active team is on the fixture sheet. So this piece of code refers to the, the active team on the data sheet. So we're looping through all the teams. Which team are we currently looking at? Hmm. So if this row creates the target team, then we want to do something. If this row contains the target team, of course, calm yourself down, Chris. Yeah, you know, like self-monitoring your stress level um, as you're coding, that's an important thing to do. If you're feeling stressed, you're more likely to make mistakes. For added realism, realis realism, relax. I'm filming all of these videos on the same day to simulate what it would be like doing this uh, VBA task. So yeah, try to stay calm, breathing. And if you're stressed, you know, you're not going to do much good coding when you're stressed. So yeah. Might be time to take a break. You know, after video three or four, I went and had a couple of minutes, just got myself a glass of water, spoke to Luna for a bit. She gave me some motivational chit chat, of course. And now we're back into the task. So, what did we just do? We just created what's called a conditional statement, a conditional statement. And once again, the blue text gives us the blue pen print, gives us the key syntax that we'd use whenever we use a conditional statement. Hmm. It's not complete yet, though. We need to say equals active team. There we go. So in English, saying if the value on the data sheet is the target team, the team on the fixture sheet that we're currently looking at. Hmm. Then we want to do something. Okay. Then we want to put that game result in. Yes. Okay. So now what's going to happen? Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to do a very similar test to what we did last time um, in the last video. Hopefully, it will actually work this time. So what's our final team? I'm just going to run the code. Our final team is Golden Retriever. And then the code as it stands is going to go all the way to the top, it's going to loop through the whole data set. So hopefully, it's going to get our last Golden Retriever result, Golden Retriever result, which is on row 13, which I said would happen last time, but we were missing our conditional statement there. Hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead, run the code here. It's going to hit play. And we do have a value of one in there. Hmm. Okay, so we had a one. In there, that's good, but it's a one in three chance. So how could you prove it? Well, this is to be done with care. I'm changing the source data. I did this last time. Remember, you should be doing this, you know, in a very deliberate way and remembering to go back and change it. But I know in this case, we're only looking at the last three fixtures. Yeah, we're only looking at the last three fixtures. So it doesn't actually matter um, what the data would be here. It doesn't matter if I, if I change it, change it a little bit. Right, play the routine again. Oh, we still got a value of one. Okay. Did I get the wrong row there? No. Ah, I just I just got the wrong cell. See, that's a good example of programmer fatigue, I, I would say. 
next two, so that should be a one, um, because it is a very simple, you know, very simple error I made that, just put it in, in the wrong cell. So once again, let's play again. And just to illustrate that this should work off any sheet um, we've run. Did you see how quickly that, that routine ran, by the way? <laughs> What about the power of Excel VBA? Incredible. We've got Chris in there. If I change that to Luna, Luna's just outside. Luna's always cheering for Flatco Retriever. That's her team because she is a Flatco Retriever, of course. And we can see that there. Okay. Seems to be working. So what's the key difference? It's going to Golden Retriever because Golden Retriever is the final team uh, that it looks at. And then it's taking the value, taking the value. Whatever value is in here is going to be transferred across. Hmm. Okay, so this should be a one because this is a home win. Okay, so we're getting that. What else do we need to do? Well, at the moment, we're doing a data transfer from sheet to sheet. That's this line of code. That's good. But we need to do more than that, don't we? We need this data to come down. So can we do that? Can we go back to our position control idea? And rather than hard coding, I mean, this is a very common way to do a task. You hard code it first and then design out that hard code and make it dynamic. How would you do this? Hmm. Thinking about how to do this myself. Right. I'm not going to say read range D9. I'm just going to reference fixture cell here. So I can say fixture cell. Fixture cell is the name of the variable that we use to manage our first loop, our containing loop, which of course is looping through the teams. I can use the uh, fixture cell variable name there, but I don't want the result to appear here. So how can I subtly control the position, just adjust it slightly to get the result to appear here? Mm. Fixture cell dot offset. Zero and then one, two. Fixture cell is here. This is one column away. The value we want to put is two columns away. And remember, with offset, it's rows first and then columns. Rows, we want it on the same row and then columns. We just want that slight adjustment. Hmm. So, what's going to happen here? Once again, stop the video and make a guess as to what's happened here. What's the value going to be in this row? Hmm. Well, it's going to be the result from Greyhound's most distant fixture, their oldest fixture. So if we go to Greyhound here, then the result is two. That's an away win. I'm going to showboat here, VBA showboating. I think the value of Chris is going to appear here. Okay, let's hit play. You can see, and we dig it. How fast is that? I love VBA, it's just mind blowing how much time uh, that that might save somebody or a company. Um, so we've got Chris there. So Jack Russell, Jack Russell's oldest fixture is an away win. We can confirm that here. Oldest home, home fixture is an away win. This should be a two, of course, for an away win. Check once more, one more. So Springer Spaniel's oldest fixture, they're a strong team. Springer Spaniel is a home win. So that doesn't surprise me. And we can see here Springer Spaniel, their oldest fixture is. Oh, so we're looking good. We're looking good working through this task, but there's more to do, isn't there? And we're only covering the last three games. So we don't want Excel to work all the way to the top here. Yeah, we don't want Excel to work all the way to the top because that takes us to what, 37 games? We only want the last three games. So it's only really, you know, this, this range around here is what we want to look at. How are we going to do that? Hmm. A few different approaches. I can think, think of an approach involving variables maybe that I think would help us. So now we're getting towards the end of this series. It's about combining techniques together, position control, variables, combine with these loops, combine with this conditional statement. That's when the magic happens. That's when the magic really happens with Excel VBA. Hope you're enjoying this series, guys. I think I'm enjoying putting it together. It's hard work, but I love getting tasks done and bring this kind of thing to you. And remember, guys, if you enjoy this kind of thing, you're going to love, you will absolutely love our member communities. It's on a next level in terms of 
the depth of the content in terms of the, the interaction that you have with me, the interaction you have with the other members. So do take the time to check out our members' communities. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care. See you in the next video.